From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Late. It's a big evening of evenings of incredible great news about your fourth Sumo's check update of 2022 from the shores of Santa Monica, California tonight. As a major announcements came in just minutes ago after afternoon's LA broadcast aired. We'll go over those big checks that are just announced and the major announcement as well of student loan debt forgiveness that came in just later today for April 22nd, 22. The major announcement by the Federal Reserve just minutes ago, minutes ago, and it's big news. The student loan debt forgiveness, that's a shocker. Those big checks that are coming and the latest developing details coming out of the White House. It's a big day with a lot of breaking news that started with the announcement of the White House as a GDP growth later this year may be smaller than initially thought. Then we have the major push to get the Big Back Be Build Back Better Act done, that detail tonight across the board. Out of nowhere, the Jay Powell announcement came in and it signaled a half basis point is coming in the month of May. What does this mean for your benefits? I have the latest details tonight as well. Then Joe Biden says that student loan debt forgiveness is on the table. This is after millions of more debts were forgiven last night. All the latest breaking news on this front, it is hugely exciting. Then, we have the situation on oil. As we learned, one of the major producers of oil did not ramp up production when we needed it. Who are they? And what is the situation tonight? We have a lot to go over. Major announcement from the White House minutes ago about student loan debt forgiveness. Major announcement by your Fed chairman about interest rates and inflation minutes ago and checks, brand new checks, a landing by direct deposit. Tonight, it's exciting. Over the next one hour of broadcasts, I'm gonna go over these huge checks that you can get. It's America's most watched show for financial news in prime time. I'm excited for all the big news tonight. And from the shores of Santa Monica, California, are you ready? I'm ready. This, my friends, is a major recording with news breaking by the minute, right before I'm going on air. It starts right now as Evenings LA gets underway. Good evening, everybody. For 22nd, 2022, major developing breaking news minutes ago, and I rushed on set to deliver you the breaking news tonight. Breaking news about student loan debt forgiveness, huge news about Build Back Better Act, big news about SS300, and it all just happened within the last hour since afternoon's LA broadcast aired just about two hours before this broadcast. This is why you cannot miss a single recording on this channel. It's America's most watched show for financial news in prime time because I give you the breaking news to the minute. If you've not become a member, become a member right tonight, right this minute. The link is under the video and at the top of the chat, Purple Hawk, Purple Power, or Calcino VIP to get that incredible newsletter with all those big four stimulus checks that have landed by direct deposit. It's coming up later in this recording. Tonight, we have a lot happening, and it happened seemingly out of nowhere. Breaking news on so many fronts tonight. I'm going to go over each of the developing details by the minute, by the hour, starting right now. We started today with breaking news out of the White House about Big About Better Act. That is the Force Simmons Recon, currently in the Senate, passed by the House. The Build Back Better Act is also called the Force Simmons Recon. Now, let's understand something very clearly. Force Simmons has the congressional version and also the White House executive order version. We'll go over those executive order checks in just a second. But the Build Back Better Act got an interesting push today. As one of the lead White House officials said to broadcast news off the record, that the U.S. economy will shrink to a 3.7% GDP growth by the end of the year. This is big breaking news tonight, folks. Why? The current GDP in the United States is 6.9%, and that was a miss when it was announced less than 30 days ago. We're looking at 7.1% GDP growth. What is GDP? It is the gross national product. It shows how big this economy is expanding or not. If the number is zero or one, it means we're not expanding. It means businesses are contracting. And if it's negative, it means we're in a recession. What's happening tonight? Well, 
just a week ago, we had a 6.9% GDP growth, shorter than expected, 7.1%, and Wall Street expecting it to drop to 4% later this year. But what did the White House say in an off-the-record comment today that the GDP growth will drop to 3.7% later this year? Wow. Now, let me go over the comments and why this is important and why the -the off-the-record statement is fascinating for purposes of Build Back Better Act. The comment said that the White House official off the record said that it's a good number because it's 3.7% compared to the expected GDP growth by the end of the year for South Korea, 2.5%, and the United Kingdom at 3.7%, Germany for 2.1%. Ridiculous, isn't it? It is really ridiculous. You do not use a benchmark of South Korea or the United Kingdom, much smaller countries, as the benchmark to whether your economy is doing better or not. What we're looking at is what analysts expected and what the number's coming in at. Analysts was looking at 7% right now at 6.9. They expected it to drop to 4% later this year. Now the White House saying off the record 3.7. So why is it off the record? Why is there not a U.S. official in the White House being quoted in the latest announcement? Because it's not a good signal. It basically says that something in the White House is not working to shrink the economy from 7% growth right now to 3% growth later this year. And, potentially, because the number is actually inflated. I'm predicting that the U.S. growth will not be 3.9% later this year, or even 4%, even 3.6%. That is going to be zero or less than that number. Why? Because I'm predicting two years of recession, and recession is zero or negative numbers. And that is where we are tonight. And I'm not alone in that assessment. Deutsche Bank, the major bank, says that the U.S. economy will be in two years of recession by next year. And now tonight... Another bank had an opinion about it as well. Goldman Sachs, the investment banking firm, would not say that it's actually definitively going to recession, the U.S. economy. But tonight is saying that there's at least a 35% chance that we are. This is all good news for Build Back Better Act. Why? Because the U.S. economy has a lot of major misses when we talk about economic data tonight. Remember, the concept of passing Build Back Better Act is that the U.S. economy is not as strong as we think it is. And you need stimulus. It's a situation that is unlike any before. In 2020, we had Mitch McConnell saying the U.S. economy was perfect. It wasn't. And we had the Democrats saying it wasn't. Well, tonight, we have both Republicans and Democrats both agreeing the U.S. economy is not perfect. And that is why the Democrats are trying to get things done very quickly. Over this one-hour broadcast, you're going to see a lot of new checks, a lot of new executive orders, a lot of new progress at the White House in just 24 hours. Why? Brand new tonight for Evenings L8 is if you look at the calendar, and you said this as well in recent days, that the election day is November 2022. Home balloting, balloting by mail, it starts at least two months ahead of time. That brings you in October, September, and in some cases, maybe even a month before that, August. If you want to influence the voter, you get them a check far before August. I made that recording in 2020 with Donald Trump. You don't wait to send them a check after they voted. You send them checks before then. So we're talking about checks before then. Then they have to have the initiative to pass them far before even July. June, May, yes. Tonight you're going to see that two states are sending out stimulus checks as well. Everyone's starting to send things out because they want your vote. But when we look back at the GDP numbers, they're not alone. The U.S. economy had major misses on economic numbers the last few days. First, the Consumer Price Index number was released just days ago, and that was a major miss. What did it show? It showed that the U.S. economy is suffering from staggering inflation worse than anyone predicted, except me. <laughs> last year, I predicted that inflation was going to 8% in December. I was right. No one else said that number. They're talking about 2 to 3% and temporary. I said, hey, it could be temporary. It's going to stay at 8%. Then in January, 8%. February, 8%. March, what happened in March? Well, we had the Consumer Price Index number released days ago, and guess what happened? Staggering inflation. Compared to the month of February, the price of oil brought oil and energy prices up 11% from the month of February to March. Staggering. Then we talk about products like fresh fruits and vegetables, a staggering increase of 3% since February to March. And all food products, about 1% to 2% across the board. When you compare the whole U.S. economy, it grew about 0.3% of inflation from February to March. That means that if Joe Biden made that swap and code to inflation right tonight, you'd lock in another $200 more per month. Let's go over the equation. 
Joe Biden, when running for president of the United States, said that he was going to swamp your benefits from COLA to inflation to lock in more money for people on benefits like you. Social Security, SSI, SSDI, Social Railroad Benefits, and Veterans Benefits. The concept is very simple to understand. Every year, your benefits are reassessed based upon a benchmark. That benchmark is COLA. And COLA doesn't move. Well, by swapping COLA to inflation, you get a better benchmark because benchmark inflation is good. Inflation always is a positive number. Last number, last December, what happened? That COLA number came in at 5%, so your benefits went up 5%. But you got cheated because inflation was 8% in December. Your benefits could have gone up 8%. And let's remember, once your benefits go up, they never go down. So 8% more, that's 8% not just that month, not just that year, but lifetime. So if Joe Biden made the swap from COVID to inflation tonight, you'd lock in another $200 more per month. That's because inflation is tracking a little bit higher than 8% in the month of March. Where is it tonight in the month of April? It's likely the same situation as well. This is as the Build Back Better Act has new push tonight as well. And that push for Build Back Better Act is coming in major fronts. Number one, the White House insiders now say that the president's trying to refocus domestic agenda on Build Back Better Act to get it done because he wants to focus away from Ukraine. What's at issue? See, so a new poll say the Americans are getting tired of hearing about Ukraine. They want to hear more about the domestic agenda. So the White House has tried to really do a lot of domestic agenda you're going to see six executive orders for student loan debt forgiveness in seven days later in this recording. You're going to see another major statement about student loan debt forgiveness just minutes ago. You're going to see three stimulus checks sent out by the president in the last 30 days. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of things happening. That's before we even get to the states. So to pass the Build Back Better Act, that would be a refocusing of the White House administration back on the U.S. economy, which is what the White House insider in a different article says is at issue tonight. But was it an issue really across the board? On the April 21st broadcast of Eden's LA, I told you the White House was trying to refocus on the U.S. economy, said the insider, and away from Ukraine. But tonight for April 22nd, what did the White House do? Provide $1.5 million more to Ukraine. Yeah, that's just not a good look. And here's why it gets confusing, because it's $1.5 million of military and economic support. Most people would just read the title of the article. I know people that just read titles. <laughs> Yeah, you know who you are. Just read the title and not read the body of the article. Of the $1.5 billion Ukraine announced today, very little of it is actually checks or cash. Most of it, nearly all of it, is military support. There's less than uh, $500 million of actual cash infusion. So what's an issue is that the White House has really not pivoted as well as it could to get on the messaging of Build Back Better Act. But tonight, the White House is also dealing with a lot of support for the Build Back Better Act, because why? The economic data is staggeringly faltering. It's not as robust as it was 30 days ago. When we look at the non-farm payrolls in the last month, it was a miss. When we look at the mortgage rate, it is a major miss, growing to 5% from 3.5% just two months ago. When we're looking at the housing numbers, major drop as well on that front tonight. And guess what's at issue? Housing starts were down for the month of March again after four months before that. Big support for Build Back Better Act when these numbers are so weak. Existing home sales dropped 2.7% for the month of March, seasonally adjusted, says a new report obtained by LA from the National Association of Realtors. The hit to the housing market is being felt in the low-income, middle-class, and the high-income class across the board. All of them suffered a downward turn of about 25 to 30% down in sales from year to day. That's because the mortgage rates have surged from 3 to 3, 5% in just less than two months. So what does this mean on you and your economy? More support to give back, build back, better act done because the economy is staggering. And then confusing data when we turn to, yes, SS300. If Joe Biden made that swap in cold inflation tonight, you'd lock in $200 more per month. Not just this year, not just this month, but a lifetime. Because once your benefits go up, they never go down. That's where inflation is tonight, 8%. But where is it in May? Where is it in December? Minutes ago, we had new guidance from Federal Reserve Jay Powell. These are breaking news remarks tonight, folks. Jay Powell just minutes ago said that the central bank is committed to raising rates expeditiously to bring down inflation and that an interest rate hike of 50 basis point, half basis point in May is likely. It's absolutely essential to restore price stability. The comments from Jay Powell basically says he's coming in very aggressively from May. He would not give his guidance beyond that. 
At the International Monetary Fund panel moderated minutes ago, Jay Powell says it's appropriate, in my view, to be a little bit more quicker to raise interest rates. I think there's also going to be something to say for front-end loading to accommodate one thing that's appropriate. I would say 50 basis points will be on the table for the month meeting of May. That's a basically a, a clear statement. We're getting 50 basis points from the month of May. He wouldn't project out from there. He also talked about the importance of front loading. What does that front loading mean? I'll go over that in a second, but let's go over more Jay Powell's comments that came in just minutes ago. I have the breaking news for you because, of course, this is Evening's LA. Powell says the U.S. economy might be very strong otherwise, but the inflation is a very big trouble across the board. And that extreme tightening is historically needed right across tonight. What does he mean by front loading? What he means is that he's going to do a hard landing, not soft landing. He's going to do a lot of major hits for this U.S. economy. Translation, he wants to do massive interest rate spikes very quickly right now to bring down inflation and then ease off if he came in too strong. What does that mean for that SS300? It means generally that you want Joe Biden to make that soft and cold inflation right tonight. Because Jay Powell just said to you just minutes ago, he's coming in very aggressively. He's going to do a lot of things very aggressively tonight. But is he talking the talk or is he walking the walk? In my opinion, Jay Powell is talking the talk because he can't walk the walk. You know, it was less than a year ago where Jay Powell never gave this type of guidance. If you knew this channel, let me make very clear. Jay Powell is your federal chair. Never usually gave guidance so emphatically clear like this. Why is he being so clear that he's doing a half basis point? And why is he sort of sending it out in a message late in the afternoon? Because he can't do it. Because he can't get inflation down. Because his interest rate spikes is not going to work. But talking the talk may work. Let me tell you why. There's now three supply chain disruptions in the United States impacting you, and none of them are able to be solved by raising interest rates across the board. There's different types of inflation in an economy, but the inflation you're suffering right now, which is oil and wheat, uh, corn, food prices, and energy prices, is not something that Jay Powell has a toolkit to fix. Let me tell you why. We have actually three supply chain disruptions. The first one was coming out of COVID lockdowns. We did not have truck drivers and shippers to get those goods to you. The second supply chain disruption, you know who caused that one. His name is Vladimir Putin. He caused a second supply chain disruption. And then the third supply chain disruption came out of nowhere in the last month. That is the subvariant of Omicron hitting China. That subvariant of Omicron hitting China tonight is very severe. Severe, because guess what happens? If China cannot get its products to us, we have inflation. Interest rates won't solve that. And if supply chain disruption continues out of China, then guess what? Chinese-made products that are made by U.S. manufacturers over there won't come to us as well. When there's supply chain disruption, you mean you have less products, and if you have less products, the prices go up higher. That three-pronged supply chain disruption tonight, coming out of COVID, Russia, and Chinese lockdown is something Jay Powell has no tools to bring down for inflation. It will cause major inflation, and raising interest rates won't solve it. That's why Jay Powell is really having these, these chatters. This is why Jay Powell is really giving these informative statements or talkative statements <laughs> at the International Monetary Fund panel tonight to talk down inflation, because in my opinion, and a lot of other analysts, he can't get inflation down. What does this mean for your benefits? If Joe Biden made that swap and cold into inflation tonight, you're good for another $200 more per month. What about May? Well, you want Joe to make that swap before May, but I don't think that Jay Powell is going to reduce inflation if this Chinese lockdown continues to permeate. And then what about later this year? Jay Powell thinks that inflation is going to drop to 1.9% later this year. I am not buying it. I think that inflation is going to come in at 4% later this year, 4% 4 later this year, reassesses your benefits and gives another $100. Remember, because they reassess your benefits every December. That would be $100 on top of your $200. That would be SS300. And that's why Jay, that Joe Biden needs to make the swap for cola to inflation tonight. The White House has done things like this before. In late 2021, the White House said to the Department of Agriculture, you're not paying enough money for SNAP. Raise the amount of money. The White House needs to reach out to the Department of Social Security Administrator and say swap that cola for inflation. And you are locked in for $200 more per month right tonight and then potentially another $100 later this year. 
What is the White House also doing? The White House is also reaching out to agencies to tell them to do things across the board. Among those agencies the White House has been reaching out to in recent hours and days has been the Department of Education. Tonight, we have the latest in six executive orders from the White House for student loan debt forgiveness, which is huge. But before I get to that, this is a big shocker. We're going on tonight, our second night of a second state that's giving you a state stimulus check. Let's recap. When we talk about Build Back, Back, Build Back Better Act, we're talking about federally sent out stimulus checks. But when we talk about your respective state, that's a state's paid stimulus check. What's happening tonight? The second state in two nights has now said, we are proposing to give you checks. Boy, this is huge. Let me explain to you what is happening. It brings us back to summer and fall 2020, when Steve Mnuchin, then Treasury Secretary under, under Donald Trump, spoke to Nancy Pelosi. And Pelosi said, the states are about to go bankrupt. Steve Mnuchin said, no, they're not. They have a lot of money. Nancy said, no, they don't. And Steve Mnuchin said, yes. In fact, they have so much money, I'm going to order the money returned back to Treasury by December that year if they don't spend it. Guess what idea that spurred? Mass spending. And in late 2020, states immediately said, uh, use or lose, I'll use. I'm not going to return the money back to the federal government. And they immediately sent out lots of stimulus checks from the states at the 11th hour. Tonight, it's happening again. Why? Because Janet Yellen did the same thing. When she did third stimulus with Joe Biden, she put in provisions in there that you need to use all the third stimulus money by December 2022, or you lose. Use or lose. And tonight, states are saying, we're going to use. We ain't going to lose. So what are they doing? They are now proposing to send you state stimulus checks. This is huge. It started one night ago as the state of Pennsylvania said it's going to give you a $2,000 stimulus check. Tonight, we have another state, the state of Maine, proposing to give its citizens a $500 stimulus check. Before we go into the calculation of how much or who, let me go over with you why. What's at issue is very simple to understand. Third stimulus dedicated fortunes to the states. Lots of money. And a lot of the states have not used the money. Now, when reminded about the December use or lose provision in the month of April, they understand that they need to move quickly. The concept of use or lose is very important for timelines. They got to get you the money far before December. They got to get you the money in November. To get you the money by November, what do they got to do? They got to already send out the checks in October. To send out the checks in October, what do they got to do for that? They have to have a state law passed not in October, as potentially in September. To get a state law passed in September, what do you got to do? You got to start voting on the law in August, draft the law in July, and present the law in June. Yeah, in less than 30 days, you're going to see a lot of states really start introducing the laws, because the bills, because they have no time to waste. It's that quickly across the board. This is great news. So what should you know? Every state was given the same amount of money from the federal government under the third stimulus. And while you think their state does not have money, guess ready. Most every state has a lot of money. And different states will have different allocations. But in the case of Pennsylvania, they have enough for a $2,000 stimulus check. That comment came from Governor Tom Wolf this week. Pennsylvania should not have to choose between paying for utilities or groceries or child care. We have the opportunity and means to ensure they're not. So we're going to send out those checks. This is huge. This is addition to the federal stimulus. This is state stimulus, my friends. And it's absolutely very well needed. Let's continue with Wolf's comment. I'm asking the General Assembly of his state to unite across the aisle for the sake of every Pennsylvania. Let's get this money out the door so that we can help it put it in the pockets of every Pennsylvanian. The comment tonight from Maine's governor is much the same. And you're likely to hear the same thing from your governor as well. Where you're likely to see all these details, you're likely to see all these details in a new revamped version of, yes, the membership newsletter. For the first time ever, the membership newsletter will start to have details of state stimulus checks in there as well. That's why you want to become a member. The membership links at the top of the chat, the pinned comment. Become a Purple Hawk, Purple Power, or Calcino VIP. Become a member tonight because that newsletter is getting revamped. What I'm going to start adding into the newsletter by the end of this week is the checks proposed for certain states. And then when they become law, I'll tell you when they become law. Because you can't wait. you got to pounce across the board. 
Now, that is an addition to the big checks for four stimulus. And they've landed by direct deposit. How do you get them? They're coming up in a second. But out of nowhere, the incredible great news tonight is that we have yet another update in the last five minutes from the White House about student loan debt forgiveness once again. If you've been watching this channel over the last six days, we have had six executive orders in five in seven days. It's so fast moving. Let me give you the latest breaking details just minutes ago. This is a hot copy that came out of the White House. Press Secretary Jen Psaki was asked whether the White House will forgive student loan debts completely as opposed to these parcel issues, which I'm about to go over. She was asked the question in a press briefer, and she said the decision to forgive complete student loan debt by executive order by Joe Biden is still on the table tonight. This is the first time the White House has actually said that it's actually considering full forgiveness of student loan debt forgiveness. This is a biggie. And I got to thank that news reporter that asked that question. What is the breaking news on this front tonight? Folks, it's a lot going on. Number one. The President of the United States, in his earliest days in office, forgave student loan debts for individuals who became disabled after graduation or went to work in the nonprofit or public sector. Then, seven days ago, started coming those executive orders. The first one was, the President said, I'm going to roll over the date that your student loan debts are due by from May to September. Number two. Then, he said, if your debts are in default, I'm going to put them in good standing. Number third executive order was he announced that if your debts were the result of fraud committed by the university against you, he's going to forgive the debt completely. Wow. And tonight, in addition to Jan Psaki's comments, another loan forgiveness. The latest loan forgiveness comes from the Department of Education Secretary Miguel Cardona. And the comment is that the Miguel Cardona team and Secretary of Education is trying to use the IDR credit and other provisions of statute to forgive tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or potentially millions of other student loan debts. Here's a comment by Secretary under Miguel Cardona, James Caval. We have an ongoing rulemaking decision that we're looking at what type of statutes should qualify for IDR credit, and we may be potential for us to improve those rules as the process goes forward. IDR is one of those numbers you, names you want to write down. I'm not a loan expert. I don't profess to be so. But I want you to go to the Department of Education's website, the Federal Department of Education, look up the IDR credit, look up all the press releases from that agency, and then look at the following. The Public Service of Forgiveness Loan and the repayment programs, because they're now saying that income-driven repayment programs could be reassessed. What they're doing is they're changing the language of the statute so more people qualify for the loan forgiveness. It's huge. And that was up to just minutes ago when Jen Psaki said the White House is looking still to potentially forgive all student loan debts. It's still on the table. I got to tell you, in the over one year that I've been recording videos about student loan debt, I don't think I've ever called the White House saying we're now looking at the situation and it's still on the table. Remember, Miguel Cardona was tasked to look at the situation oh, it was over six months ago and we had no update. Tonight, the White House is saying it's actually on the table. Wow. Huge breaking news tonight. Now, we're not done there yet. What's also happening tonight is that not only is student loan debt forgiveness potentially getting even bigger than is recorded in this video, not only are state governors like Wolf in Pennsylvania and the governor of Maine looking to set out stimulus checks from those states, Joe Biden has now deposited in some accounts of viewers of this channel direct deposited for stimulus checks. How do you get them? They're coming up in the second half of this video. Big four stimulus checks have now landed by direct deposit, and they're absolutely astronomical. This channel approaches its two-year anniversary, April 25th, just a few days from now. And in the years of recording, I don't think I've ever seen stimulus checks this big. It's very rare to see stimulus checks of this massive magnitude. Last night, one wonderful viewer in the live chat said, her name was Carol, said, LA makes it so simple for you. He really makes it simple for you to explain how to get these checks in the membership newsletter. That is why you want to become a member because that membership newsletter is so helpful. You don't even have to take notes when watching a video. You can just follow along because guess what? More checks have landed tonight. And if you become a member, it'll be in the membership newsletter tonight, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time via the YouTube alerts, delivered Monday through Friday. Now, let's go to a big shocker, which tees up 
six signals. As you understand, there's a lot of stimulus packages happening at the same time right now. We have third stimulus paying out right now. We have fourth stimulus paying out right now. We have SSI and SSDI, that SS300 happening right now. We have student loan forgiveness, which is seven stimulus happening right now. And then six stimulus is really at issue tonight with a big shocker. Tonight, we learn that in the situation of six stimulus, that oil question at hand, we are potentially less caught up for six stimulus than initially thought. Six stimulus is a deal of a lot of situations like wheat and oil. But tonight, we learn that we may have a deficit for oil bigger than initially believed. What's at issue? When Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine, we thought that we had a deficit of 3 million barrels of gasoline per day because that's how much Vladimir Putin supplies the world economies. Well, tonight we learned him actually being a little bit worse. Why? Because in that month that Putin invaded Ukraine, there was actually a pullback in production of gasoline by OPEC, we now learn. A new report says that in the month of March, when Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine and 3 million barrels were embargoed of Russian oil, suddenly OPEC produced 1.45 million less barrels themselves. This is a shocker, folks, because guess what? We thought we're trying to make up for 3 million barrels missing from Vladimir Putin per day. Now we're learning about another 1.5 million reduced capacity from OPEC. That's 4.5 million missing across the board. How much have we replaced it with? We replaced 1 million barrels per day from the strategic reserves were released in the United States from Joe Biden. Then the partner allies releasing a half million barrels per day. So we've replaced 1.5 million barrels for 4.5 million missing. Yeah, they don't cut it. Meantime, a new report today signals that potentially a lot of other people are watching my channel, watching this channel, because why? They said tonight that people have forgotten how much bread is consumed in Western Europe from Ukraine. They call it the bread belt in a series of new reports tonight, the bread belt. And they say that Ukrainian bread is so robust and accounts for so much bread consumed in the Western United, Western allied countries that that impact on their economies could even be more severe. What's an issue tonight? The Western allies had agreed, especially France, Germany, and the United States, to do a six stimulus package to battle recessionary pressures caused by Vladimir Putin. And now Germany says, maybe we won't. As a major banks like Deutsche Bank says, you must, your economies are going to go into recession. The White House may still do it itself and may merge it into four stimulus. We'll watch across the board. But here's what you need to know. In the situation of oil, it's actually going to go from where we are tonight to potentially worse. Why? The White House has not gotten that JCPOA deal done with Iran to increase oil. And you've already heard me say, we're down 3 million barrels a day. That shortage means higher gas prices. Then the price of wheat and grain is actually going higher because we're learning now that it went up in the month of February to March, as I said it would. That's a 10-year high, and there could be another 40% increase on top of that. Wow. But in the second half of this recording, get ready. Because Joe Biden understands that you need money. And now he's not only done six executive orders for student loan debt forgiveness in seven days, he's not only made a major pivot on the White House for getting Build Back Better Act done, he's now also sent out stimulus checks, and they've landed by direct deposit. I'll go over how you get those checks and how you push. It's coming up in the second half of this video. But first, if you haven't become a member, make sure you do. And in 60 seconds, we'll be back with the second half of this video. And I have a big commentary later in this video as well. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, to the shores of your home, I'm happy you've joined me on a big night with so much breaking news. It's night like this that I literally am grabbing stuff off of the printer that are literally just coming off the news cycle. Stuff not covered even two hours early on this recording. It's a big fluid night, so that's why you want to become a member. You don't want to miss a single video or that membership newsletter tonight. I'll be back with you in 60 seconds with the big second half of, after, of Eni's LA from the shores of Santa Monica, California. I'm excited for what's coming up with those big checks after the commercial break. See you back in 60 seconds. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, 
and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. LLA returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LLA at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LLA. And the excitement continues on a big evenings LA tonight for April 22nd, 2022. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, I'm excited you're joining me because a lot of breaking news across the board. You've already seen the breaking news tonight from the Federal Reserve as the Fed President, Jay Powell, we're doing a half basis point in the month of May. There we go. We have the guidance on that FOMC meeting from May. It will be a half basis point. And all indications from Jay Powell is he's front loading, meaning that he will likely do another half basis point thereafter. If he doesn't get inflation down, then what happens? Well, then you're going to have very high interest rates and continuing 50 basis point meetings. I'll have more about that later in this recording. Then we have the President of the United States now saying that complete student loan debt forgiveness is still on the table. Wow, this is a huge breaking developing news from Jen Psaki, his press secretary, just minutes ago. Next up after that was the other loan forgiveness from the White House just earlier today. And then those comments from the person off the record in the White House's core that said, we're expecting a smaller GDP later this year of 3.7. That is why the White House is moving so quickly to get you money. Now, remember, when you look at the situation at hand, the White House is moving very quickly because there's a lot of money available. And that money is fourth and third. The great news tonight is that Simul Shucks have landed by direct deposit. And have you gotten them? I'm going to go over how to get them right now. If you're a member, pull out your membership newsletter. Follow along with me right now. If you're not, become a member. The link's at the top of the chat. Because it's so much easier the way I package it for you in the membership newsletter to just follow along. As one viewer last night, Carol says, L.A., you make it so simple. You make it so clear and so concise between the video and the rec and the newsletter that I just follow along and I pounce. And she got massive sums of money from check A, B, and C this week. So let's go over those check A, B, and C. First, check A. The President of the United States understands that the Build Back Better Act is currently sitting in the Senate. And he wanted to get you money. So what did he do? He took out one of the checks from the second cluster of checks in the Build Back Better Act and sent it out to you. Let's go over the breaking news of those three checks tonight. The second check is B, and the third check is C. They are all happening, and I'm going to go over the huge details of each of those checks one at a time. When you look at these checks, it's important to pounce because these are astronomically great sums of money. Check A is a $6,500 check that became law by executive order by Joe Biden March 31st. Did not need a vote of Congress. Then a fifteen to eighty thousand dollar check became law March fourth, twenty twenty two, and check C is an MSC check. Let's go over each of these checks. How do you get them? If you're a member, let's first go over check A. Check A became a law just days ago, and it pays out sixty five hundred dollars overall, but in some states pays up to twelve thousand dollars. It is a four stimulus check. It was in the Build Back Better Act, but the president took it out. What is the income qualification? Single individual seventy five thousand less. You can get it. Married couple, $150,000 less, you can get it. If you're on benefits, you can get it. SSI, SSDI, Social Security, Railroad Benefits, Veterans Benefits. It's called the Homeowner's Weatherizing Grant Check. And how do you get it? You open that membership newsletter. Hopefully, you're first a member. If you aren't, become a member. The link's at the top of the chat and in the pinned comment. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, or Calcino VIP. Then get that newsletter. Delivered Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You go into the newsletter, the first few lines are about the current economic numbers tonight, like oil, wheat, and grain. And then the next line is check A. It'll give you a little bit more description about that check, and then we'll give you the link. You go right into the link, it sends you to the national website. Then you choose your respective state, like Tennessee, 
And then you choose the program, Weatherizing Grant Shack, Tennessee, and you pounce. Once you get approved, you get funded right away. Direct deposit, baby. It is astronomical. The second check being direct deposited is a fifteen dollars to $80,000 check. Viewers are getting these direct deposits at about $66,000 to $80,000. Massive, wonderful amounts of stimulus checks. Let's look at this check B. Again, it's a fifteen dollars to $80,000 stimulus check. Astronomically large. It's a four stimulus taken out of Build Back Better Act. And the eligibility for income is the same as check A. Single individual, $75,000 or less. Married couple, $150,000 or less. If you're on benefits, you can get it as well. The last qualification is you own your home. So how do you get this check? You go again back to that newsletter. It's right under check A. Then it'll give you descriptions more about that check, like it pays for home repairs and property taxes. And then you click the link, and it'll send you into the application website. For the nation, then you choose your respective state on the map, like Oklahoma. Click the state, and that will send you into the state's application. You pounce, you get that application on file, and then you get funded within about 30 days. How easier could that be? It's very simple. And that is how I put things together so simplistically for you across the board. Now let's go to that check C, which is astronomical. I've been covering check C on this channel for over a year and a half. As this channel approaches its two-year anniversary, April 25th, this has been the big success story of this channel. Let's go over how this happened. Check C first manifests itself in late 2020. We we're at the end of second, at the end of first stimulus. We had not got to our second stimulus check. You needed money. It was the holidays. And I said, I need to get you money. So I looked for it and I found it. Not a lot, $250,000 for rent, utilities, and mortgage assistance. I said, here you go, go get it. You and I got very lucky because I had a document, an exclusive preview of a new bill for 2021, the next year, that I coined the expression as third stimulus. When I looked at it, I said, there's a lot of money in here, folks. And it's the same money you're going after right now. When this becomes law, if it does, you're going to be trained how to get the money because you've been getting this in December 2020. And I think you can get about 15000 They proved me wrong. The viewers got money, but not 15000 On average, $45,000. Viewers pounced in magnitudes anyone could never predict. With these massive payouts, they got when third stimulus became law in early 2021, look at these monies for rent that they got. 27000 like Elizabeth, all the way to 20000 Utilities, Mark's brother-in-law got $15,000. How about SNAP? How about those combos? Incredible. In the case of SNAP, Mark's brother-in-law is getting $25,000 a year over 10 years, a quarter million dollars in this channel. Look at those combos. Mark was at 32000 Then he went to 50000 Then he went to 100000 Now he's at 166. Lorena is at 105. Now she's at 120. How about Johnny? He had gotten $80,000 in one week, then turn around and help his family the next week, $50,000 each for them. And then he helped about 20 neighbors get over $350,000 over the next few weeks. These sums of money are available, but they're being available in a totally different way tonight. Viewers got rounds at the time in early 2021. Last summer, I said, get another round. Then in the winter, I said, get another round, three to four months. They got it. They got it. We call it Santa stimulus. And early 2022, I said, get another round, three to four more months across the board. Viewers said, no, no, I'm tired of getting rounds. Let's get a whole year. Let's get an MSC check of this. I said 12 months of these items. Do they have enough money for 12 months? Viewers took the information of this channel and like true purple hawks, they really pounced majorly. C check was created by viewers, not created by me. The bill was created by Congress, third stimulus. And I got the viewers on average 45,000, but in the recent days they're getting $2,000 a month over 12 months. That is $24,000 of MSE checks. That is check C. Boy, is it a lot of money. So how do you get this big check C? Let's look at that check C right now. Unlike check A and B that involves going to a application or a link, check C involves the very simple analysis of picking up the phone and making a call. Let's look at that incredible check C tonight. It pays out about $24,000, $2,000 a month for 12 months. The viewers are averaging $45,000. Where do you reach out to get these incredible sums of money? You're going to reach out to a series of places. First, if you're a member, you're going to reach out to over a dozen places, upwards of a dozen and a half. 
What are those places? Let's look at the details right now. You're going to reach out to your city hall, your city house authority, your county hall, your county house authority, your state hall, and your state house authority. That is the start. Then, if once you become a member, you're also going to reach out to the nonprofits, which are over about six more on top of that. The key words you're going to say are rent assistance because of COVID, mortgage and utility assistance because of COVID. You don't say words they don't know, like stimulus or MSC or stimulus check or waivable check. Reach out to the places plus the nonprofits, put mobile applications in the file, do these checks for as many months as you can, and get that membership newsletter. Because guess what? I show you those nonprofits. Those nonprofits are incredible because they pick up money that often the state doesn't have in there. Don't wait to get these big checks because they're there for you. Why would you wait? Pounce and get these big checks tonight. It is checksy. You deserve them. Get them across the board. Average viewers getting about $45,000. Do it tonight. Do not wait. Repeat. Do not wait to become a member. Do not wait to get that newsletter. And do not wait to become pouncing. Become a member right tonight. The newsletter link. Well, the, become a member tonight. The link to become a member is at the top of the chat. And also in the description of the video. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, or Calcino VIP. Then get that newsletter delivered to you Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 9 o'clock Central, delivered via the YouTube alerts. However, you have the YouTube alerts to send you an alert. Watch for the one at 7 p.m. It says newsletter. Next, go to the front of the channel and hit the bell. There's a little bell. Make sure you hit it and set it to all notifications. And finally, subscribe. You want to make sure you get every notification across the board. Tonight, there's a lot moving so quickly. Did you notice how things are moving so quickly? The President of the United States doing six executive orders for student loan debt forgiveness in just a few days, in less than seven days. The announcement from the White House that the President has debt forgiveness, student loan debt forgiveness on the table. The push by the White House to do a lot of other things like six stimulus and potentially to swap that color for inflation right across the board. Why is there so much movement? You understand why. Balloting by mail starts being sent out at least 16 to 90 days before Election Day, which is November 2022. But if you want to impact voters' response, you don't do what Trump did in 2020. Back in 2020, as we look back over the last two years of this channel, I made a lot of recordings in 2020 where I said to Trump, or, or to the Republicans, if you want to get that electorate to vote for you, you sent out money before the election. He had the money. Guess what he did? He sent out the money after the election, $600 stimulus check. You don't do that. If you have money available to give Americans, you give it to before the election. So you're going to see the ramp up of the White House very quickly now, suddenly seeing a lot of stuff very soon in a very dense way. And you're saying, wow, that's a lot in one night. I got to tell you, I wish you could see everything that's on set for me. Let's see if you can see it. Oh, it's so heavy. Look at all this. A lot of this is in the last few hours because the White House is suddenly ramping up very, very quickly. Yeah, it's midterm elections. You understand that part of the equation. But you're also going to see state governors do the same thing as well. Finally, tonight, a commentary from myself to you. One of the best things I do is I answer people's questions, and I get people big sums of money. And I've been doing this since day one of this channel. Day one of this channel, people had applied for the EIDL loan and grant. And suddenly we saw that people who applied, for example, on April 1st were getting paid before people who applied on March 30th. People applied on April 30th, got paid before people applied on 4-8. Immediately, we realized that something was wrong. And as I asked viewers what was going on, they told me, I applied on March 30th. I applied on March 30th, 3-30, 3-31, 4-8, 4-9. Those were what I called the vortexes. I learned it from the viewers. I asked, what's going on? They told me when they applied and why their applications had still been stalled up. Then I had people ask me really tough questions about how do I get this EIDL approved? How do I get that EIDL loan approved? How do I get that PUA approved? Really tough questions. The tougher the question, the better the recording and the better I can help you. Now, along the way in the last two weeks, some people have been dropping really, really easy questions. In fact, that questions shouldn't be asked. Let me explain what's going on. In a given recording, I understand it's one hour of broadcast. A lot been covered in one broadcast. But it's important to understand when you're watching a broadcast not to spend your time in the live chat tweeting or typing messages of questions to other viewers. Because when you do, you're asking and not listening. What's happening is that in a 10-minute period in which you're typing a question to the universe of who's in the live chat, you miss me say the details in the video. For example, you start to type something, then you edit it, <laughs> then you put an emoji, then you put a happy face, then you send it. 
And then you look. No one is answering. Then you look. No one's answering. Someone answered. Oh, it's the wrong answer. I don't understand the answer. Let me ask it again. You just spent 10 minutes doing that. Guess what you missed? You missed 10 minutes of the recording of a one-hour broadcast. And then when you're done with the equation, you say, I don't understand the recording because you weren't watching it. Remember, the recordings are made from me to you. I'm making the recordings from me to you. The newsletter is from me to you. The people in the live chat are not there to be your buffer for information. Because one, they're watching to learn like you are, and they don't want to be hearing your questions when they're trying to learn at the same time. It's very hard to hear a question, and you're trying to learn and focus on something else. It's as though you're in a lecture hall, and the teacher's teaching, and the someone next to you says, can you tell me what I missed? I just showed up 20 minutes to lecture. Shh. I mean, he's talking about this thing that's on the exam. Don't interrupt me. I'm focusing. That's what's important is you really got to focus when the video is airing. Next. It's important to understand that when you ask the question to people in the live chat, they may not have the right answer. They may have incomplete answers or they may have the completely wrong answer. And you ask people who don't make the recordings. I make the recordings. I make the recordings for you. They're not making recordings for you. Moreover, it, it, it makes me feel sort of insignificant. <clears throat> it makes me feel insignificant. I'm making a recording for you, and you're not listening to me. You're asking someone else that's in a chat that didn't make a recording for you what's going on. They didn't make the recording. Why would they know? <laughs> Did they do the research? They didn't do the research. Do they have a YouTube channel? No, they don't. I This is the YouTube channel. So you need to really focus on the recording. Now, let's say you are absolutely focused. You're not typing questions to other viewers. And then you still need clarity. And you're a member. Then if you're a member, reach out to the membership newsletter. Make sure you reach out to the member com uh, the, the, the community page, which is under the video's description. It has a little picture of a little, a little emoji of a house. Reach out to the member's community page if you have a question about something not covered in the video. Notice how I said that. Not covered in the video. If you have a question about something also not covered in the video, I think it's an important thing to be covered in the next video, send me a private message. Don't send me a message about something that I've already covered in the video because I already covered it. Now, if you need clarity about something because you don't understand how this works, for example, you don't understand how inflation gets down if they raise those interest rates and how would that impact your SS300 and then how does that SS300 get calculated next year, reach out to the members community page. They're here to help you. And that is the importance of really focusing on the substance of the video. Watch the video throughout from beginning to end, because there's a lot coming throughout that entire broadcast. And I got a lot more tomorrow. <laughs> so join me throughout the night. We got evenings at 5 o'clock, evenings countdown at 6 o'clock, stream and symbols at 7, evenings extra at 8, and a sunset at 9. And we're just getting started because then we go into our overnight show. We're back tomorrow morning on mo early morning countdown and mornings at LA. Thank you for the big viewership this morning on mornings at LA. Of course, it's at 9 a.m. live on air. And with that, stay informed, stay focused. Always stay focused to the videos because the videos are here to help you. I'm here to help you. And the membership newsletter is all part of the equation. Get that membership newsletter in front of you when you watch the videos because it makes the videos more self-explanatory. As Carol said last night on the live chat, as she got massive sums of money from this channel, folks, L Life makes it so clear. All you got to do is read the newsletter. All you got to do is listen to the video, and as I would recommend, have the newsletter in front of you when you're re-watching the, the, the video. It's so clear across the board. That's what we're here for. Cashing checks, not tracking checks. And from the choice of Santa Monica, California, from my home to your home, we're just getting started because a lot more checks are on the way. Direct deposit, baby. Stay informed, stay focused, and stay with LA for more. Across the board and throughout the night.